So you want to mod 7 Days to Die, but you have no idea where to start. Maybe you want to put some new vehicles in the game. Maybe you want to add or change some of the weapons that are in the game. Or you just want to make some slight adjustments to the display in the game, move the HUD around a little bit, and make it a little bit easier for you to see. All very simple to do. Let's get into it. First thing you got to do is figure out where your 7 Days to Die is installed. So open up your Steam, go to your games list under your library to where it says 7 Days to Die. Right click it and go down to Properties. Over here on the left hand side, click on Installed Files. And then up at the very top, you'll see where it says Size of Installation and then a Browse button. And when you click this, this is going to open up where you have 7 Days to Die installed. It's going to be installed under the Steam apps folder under steam obviously you can click up in the little title bar here if you want to see where it's installed if you want to try and manually get to it but if you can't remember where that's at you can always just go through the steam process this is where all of your seven days that i files are please don't mess with any of these unless you absolutely know what you're doing because you can absolutely ruin your game and you have to basically reinstall it You'll see a folder here called mods. This is where everything's going to be installed for you to be able to modify the game. So open it up and you're going to see this folder here that says zero TFP harmony. Leave this folder alone. Don't delete it. Don't change it. Don't rename it. Don't do anything to this folder. It has to be here for mods to function properly. Okay, that's the easy part. Now you have to actually download and install these mods. If you have not changed your browser to ask you every time you download a file, by default, it's going to put it in your downloads folder under your username. So you usually have a username folder on your desktop, has downloads inside of it. This is by default where it puts everything you download. So if you've ever downloaded anything from the internet, it's going to do the same thing with the mod files. If you have it set like I do, where it's going to ask you to download, where you want to put them, then I usually just save it to my desktop or I'd created a, another folder here that's just called mods to install. That way I can download multiple mods at the same time. I would recommend not installing more than one or two mods at a time just in case there is an error. So download one or two mods, put them into the folder, launch the game and make sure you don't have any of those red error codes. Because if you decide, oh, I'm going to put 20 mods in here, you load up the game and all of a sudden it starts having a whole bunch of errors, you have no idea which one of the mods is causing the problem. So keep that in mind as we go along. Next thing you got to do is go to one of the websites that hosts all the mods. If you're brand new to it, I would absolutely recommend sticking to either nexusmods.com or 7 days to die mods.com. Both of those are reputable sites. The files on them are secure. Or you can download the modlets directly from the mod developers like Kane, the, the developer and creator of Darkness Falls. He's got all of his modlets in here too. A lot of them you'll see that I actually use like the food and water. I like to use that one because it moves the food and water bar over there underneath stamina and sh your health bar instead of having it underneath your backpack. But that's neither here nor there. So. I'm going to show you guys, we're going to start with the OCB Stop Fuel Waste mod. This is the mod I use to stop your workstations from wasting wood or fuel or whatever you have in it when it's done crafting or smelting. When you figure out which mod you want to install, what you need to make sure is that it is compatible with the version that you're using. It may not always say right here in the title. Sometimes it'll say down here in the about. So just kind of look around to see where it's at. But you can see this one is a version 1.2 up to 2.0. So this one is compatible with the newest version. So all you have to do is go down here where it says files. Click on it. And you're going to see up here you have main files and then you have the older versions in case you're playing an older version of seven days to die and you know like this one's one to alpha 21 this one is for alpha 20 those are older versions this is for version one and up so since we're doing this manually you click on where it says manual download now for nexusmods.com you do have to have an account and you have to be logged in to download but it's free to do it not a big deal you can get a paid version of it if you want to for faster downloads but this entire file is only 5 kb so the free slow download version is plenty so you click on slow download it'll ask if you want to donate you donate you can if you want to support the mod developer but you don't have to and it's going to pop up and ask you where you want to save it if you have it set. Again, if you don't get the prompt to ask you, it's just going to download it into your downloads folder. So I'm going to save mine into my mods to install folder. Ta-da, it's done. So now inside of my mods to install folder, you're going to see I have the stop fuel waste mod here. This is important. 
each mod you download, no matter where you download it from, is going to come inside a compressed folder. That's basically a folder with inside another folder. If you decide to just use this file right here, seven days that I won't recognize it, it won't do anything. It won't work. So for ease of showing this, I'm going to minimize my browser. Right over here, we have the actual mods folder inside seven days to die, where you have the harmony folder I showed you about just a little bit ago. Again, leave that one alone. And then you have this folder over here, which is where we just downloaded it. So you can't just straight up use this file by itself. It won't do anything. So you just need to double click it to open it. And you're going to see now there's a regular looking file, regular file folder here. So then you're going to left click and hold so that you can drag it over here. And you'll see it has an option there as you're looking, it says copy to mods. So you let go of it, it copied it, you're good to go. That's how you will go through and do every single one of the mods that you actually want to use. You can see like I have a bunch of mods that I use in my regular series. Move all those back over here so you can see them. Each mod or modlet that you use is going to have its own folder underneath the seven days to die mods folder here. Each one is going to have its own folder. So you don't want to create another folder inside this to put anything else in use the folders exactly as it is from the mod developer themselves and just extract it or open up the compressed folder and drag the files into here all of these are verifiable i've used all these in my series and stuff that we're using now so i can just straight up launch the game and i'm not, not going to get any errors for it and one other thing to keep in mind was some of the mods for instance we're going to look at the izzy's all-in-one weapon pack this is one i like to use a lot because well obviously it adds a ton of guns and weapons to seven days to die i've used this one a bunch and i've shown this one a bunch Sometimes you will have a mod that is a lot more complicated than just moving something around on the screen. So for instance, like this one you're gonna see has quite a few different things to download. You can download the full bundle, which has everything you need to, or if you wanna download a manual. So this one right here, download manual, the Izzy All-in-One Gun Pack version five. This is the main pack. This is the heavy weapon pack. If you want to download just this one, it requires the original gun pack to work. So if you want to download this, you have to have this. If you want to use the vanilla gun replacer pack, this one's standalone. You can download just that. So every once in a while, as you're going through and download some of these, it's going to take you to another page where you have to download more than one file to go along with it. So that's something to keep in mind is that some of the mods is more than just one download. So just as a basic heads up, every once in a while you have a mod install that requires more than one download to get it to work. The other thing you have to do when you're modifying 7 Days to Die is you have to launch the game without using EAC or Easy Anti-Cheat. Easy way to do that is again from Steam Library here, right click 7 Days to Die and go down to Properties. And on the very first tab right here where it says General, you can go under Select Launch Options and you can choose it to Launch Game Without EAC. You can ask it to every single time. You can just play it like normal, show the game launcher. I leave it on just launch game without EAC. That way, as soon as I open up Steam and I click play, it's going to launch it without having the easy anti-cheat enabled. If you have easy enabled or easy anti-cheat enabled EAC, mods won't work and chances are you're probably going to get a bunch of errors this works whether you are playing single player with mods or you're playing on a server with mod so if you're doing any modding at all make sure you turn off easy anti-cheat and of course the other huge important thing is when you load the game and you click to continue and you go to the main menu here you don't see the console pop up here with a whole bunch of red lines or when you decide to launch into the game you don't see the console pop up with a whole bunch of red lines saying that there's errors as long as you get to this point in the game, you don't see any errors, most of the time you're okay. So you load it up and your mods are good to go.